Fit rappers, sit back, I'm about to 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 begin. Sit back, I'm about to sit back, I'm about to begin. The beautiful thing about where we sit is that we get to have the luxury of having opinions and, and putting them out there and projecting our thoughts and opinions on, on this team and how they're built. And we don't have to bear the responsibility of what comes with that. That's that's one relief I do have because Brett Veach knows how to build an NFL roster better than I can ever imagine. Sure. And despite already knowing that, what happened this week taught me a very valuable lesson. And that's that the Chiefs will not budge in contract talks. Uh, or negotiations, even if it means that they don't solidify an area of need. Which is why this Chris Jones situation is taking a minute. they they, they got to make it a win for both sides. What, whether folks want to accept it or not, wide receiver is still very much a need for the Chiefs. 100%, man. And most of you agree with me, even if you don't think you do. Because most of you were pounding the table for the Chiefs to draft a wide receiver in the first round, even though we knew this is a thin wide receiver class, and the Chiefs had the 31st overall pick, which was the last pick of this year's first round. But that didn't stop Chiefs fans from wanting to be where the Chiefs attacked the first round. That was with Kadarius Toney. That was with Sky Moore. That was with MVS and Justin Ross on the roster. Facts. Everybody wanted a first-round wide receiver. The Chiefs wait until the second round to take a wide receiver, and now we're going to pretend as if these same guys are enough? Yeah. I want Kadarius Toney, Sky Moore, Rashi Rice, and the rest of these young wide receivers to turn into something special, but I knew the Chiefs not only needed to replace Juju, but upgrade from Juju, and so did a lot of you. The only difference is how we wanted the Chiefs to do so. I was someone who very much believed in the Chiefs going the veteran route because the Chiefs st still didn't, don't have a single proven wide receiver one on this roster. And the best way to change that is to go and get a top 10 wide receiver in free agency, and there was just someone that happened to be there, as we just talked about. Maybe it was all the money, again, with D-Hop, and maybe the Chiefs would have never been able to match the Titans dollar for dollar. That doesn't change the fact that the Chiefs still have a massive question mark at the top of their wide receiver room. Whether you were on the side of drafting a first wide receiver or you were on my side of getting the proven veteran difference-making wide receiver one, the Chiefs did neither, and now the pressure has never been heavier on Mahomes and Kelsey. Sure, they could make it work. And win another Super Bowl this way. It could very well happen. They are the prohibitive favorites. They got maybe the best roster in football. And they likely will. I'm hoping that's the case. But if the Chiefs want to stretch out this duo for as long as they can, they can expect them to not only replicate 2022, but now do it with even less around them with no Juju. And here's what I want to say about Juju real quick. Because I've had people sit here and talk about how this is the same wide receiving core the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl with. No, it's not. No, it is not. Right. Juju Smith-Schuster was by far and away the best receiver on this team last season. He led the team. He led wide receivers, rather, in targets, receptions, yards, yards per game, and was second in touchdowns by only one. That guy's now with the Patriots. And again, the Chiefs did not upgrade or replace him. If Kadarius Toney can stay healthy, if Sky Moore can develop his game, if Rashi Rice can become the first wide receiver rookie to produce at a high level in Andy Reid's offense in over a decade, then these concerns won't matter. But that's all based upon what, Trevor? Ifs. Hope. The Chiefs are in the midst of a dynasty. You don't sustain and maintain dynasties on ifs, but rather on sure things. That's why we feel so confident here that the Chiefs can still overcome these things. Why? Because of who Trevor just mentioned a minute ago. Well, they still have Andy Reid, and they still have Patrick Mahomes, they still have Travis Kelsey. Those are our sure things. And you have to continue to add those sure things to continue a dynasty. I know everybody likes to pretend that Tom Brady won those seven Super Bowls on his own, but guys, six of them, he had a Hall of Fame head coach and an elite defense, every single one of them. And most times he had the great, one of the greatest tight ends of all time. He had a great wide receiver, at least one in almost every single one of those last four Super Bowls. Guys, this has to you have to have sure things. You have to know what you're getting every single work, every single week. Because I hope it works out. It, it, and because if it does, the Chiefs will repeat as Super Bowl champions. Which at the end of the day, regardless of where our opinion our opinions reside, 
That's what we all want here. And that's the point I'm trying to make, is that none of us should be going against each other when it comes to how we want to see this team, what we want to see this team do. We just might have a difference of opinion on how they get there. And that's what I try to remind fans every single offseason. This isn't supposed to be doom and gloom. We're not sitting here trying to be negative Nancys and try to make it sound like we don't believe in the Chiefs. And, and, and it's so funny. I, I've gotten this so many times, Trevor, on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. People are like, Lance, you got to start trusting in Brett Veach. Trevor, <laughs> there are maybe, I don't think there's a single human being on this planet that I trust more than you. But are you going to sit here, Trevor? And I'm sure it's on uh, probably on the flip side. You probably trust me more than a lot of people on this planet. Yep. But I'm sure there are things between you and I that we don't agree on. Ways that we go about certain things, how we handle shit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are a lot of things we don't agree on. But does that change the trust? No. We're just difference of opinion. We just have different viewpoints on different things. That's okay. Because like I said at the top, Brett Veach knows this game and how to build a roster better than I could ever imagine. That doesn't mean that my opinion needs to be in, in, in complete parallel and complete unison with his every single time. Because it's not going to be. And if that's your way, if you're just going to just agree with everything he says and does, that's your way. But that's not mine. I have opinions on things. Because if you recall, guys, for the previous three decades before Patrick Mahomes, everybody excused the fact the Chiefs never re refused to draft a, a quarterback in the first round. How did that work out? But you know what I was? I was one of those few young guys out there who were pounding the table and saying, Chiefs, draft and develop a first-round quarterback. No, Lance, Alex Smith is good enough. He can get the job done. They just need more of this and more of that and more of this. And every single year, top 10 defense, top 10 defense, top 10 defense, top 10 defense, skill position players out the ass, awesome offensive line, Andy Reid. What was holding the Chiefs back? The quarterback position. Glenn, uh, uh, John Dorsey, these other GMs throughout the history of time, Carl Peterson, built awesome rosters. But that didn't mean that I was going to agree with the way they did things because I didn't. And what ended up happening? The moment Brett Veach had the balls, well, it was really still John Dorsey, but Brett Veach is the one that told them you got to draft this guy, and Andy Reid signed off on it. The moment they decided to take the quarterback position seriously, take the biggest risk in franchise history and trade up 17 spots in the first round in 2017, what happened to this franchise? It went from being a middling, irrelevant, good but never great franchise to literally the top dog. And it has not changed for five years. And it's not changing anytime soon. So I disagreed with that back then. I'm going to disagree with things in five years from now. But that doesn't mean that we all don't want to see the trajectory of what the Chiefs have become become what it, the normal is. Because now it's Super Bowl or bust. And I know that's weird for some of us still because most of our lives that hasn't been the case as Chiefs fans. But now it has, so the pressure is on. Excitement level for me is much lower than yours, and my nervousness level is much higher than yours. Uh, I think that ours probably flips a little bit mm. because I look at I'm a, you know me, Charlie, I'm a numbers guy. Yeah. Um, I look at this and and Kadarius Tony, MVS, Sky Moore, Justin Watson, and Richie James, all guys that are perceived to probably make the roster, um, combined have played 17 NFL seasons. I do believe Richie James is more of a special teams guy. I think that's yeah. why he, I think he's going to be in like that punt return. I know Bobby Stroop's big on him. He says he's a dog and all that stuff. I get it. Yeah. Um. I, I need to I need to see it to believe it. He's a, guy, a veteran he's, at this he's point. He's a very he's a very limited player offensively. Like yeah. we have not seen a lot of. There's a reason for that. Like teams like the 49ers that he was recently on. I like Giants. that he's come from those systems though. Yes, but I'm saying that it, on teams like that you should be able to shine because those teams have also lacked wide receivers. And for you not to play at a high level, like he last year was his best season. He had a little over 500 yards, and like four touchdowns. Yeah, good. I'm not expecting Solid. a lot of him out of as a receiver. So, I'm really not. Yeah. So these these five names uh, are, like I said, guys that are probably going to make the team. Uh, they have 17 combined seasons in the NFL. Uh, seasons with 60 plus receptions. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Seasons with 700 plus yards. Zero. Seasons with seven plus touchdowns. Zero. And you bring up Travis Kelsey. We talk Travis Kelsey because we just assume that this dude is going to keep rolling every single year, which I presume he will this year for sure. But he will be 34 in October, as I continue to tell you guys. And this is a violent sport, and dudes age quickly. And most all-time great tight ends by 34 years old are done. Uh, Tony Gonzalez, Jason Witten, and Antonio Gates are the exception. Yeah. Travis Kelsey will probably be as well. But it's just unfair to continue to put him put so much on him because to Tony Gonzalez's credit, uh, to Jason Witten's credit, they always had a ton of great wide receivers around them to take some of that pressure off of them. Antonio Gates sometimes did as well, but the point is that if Travis Kelsey, and this is why I keep talking about, I'm looking at this from a big picture standpoint, I want Travis Kelsey to continue to play at a high level for as long as he can. 
And yes, 2023 is going to have so much more on him based upon the guys that we're seeing right now. I think that's going to that could potentially cut his career a little shorter because of how much is going to be on him, how many more targets, how many hits he's going to take. I know he's good at avoiding big tackles, big hits, but we even saw last season guys like Derwin James literally doing WWE moves on him based upon plays that he's going to have to take on. No. Those things do catch up to you. Um, and and if, in my opinion, because I you know we expect Patrick Mahomes to be an offensive or a statistic juggernaut every single year. With these numbers that I just presented to you guys, if he still manages to throw for 5,000-plus yards and 40-plus touchdowns in 2023, I mean, that's about as easy of a unanimous MVP as I've ever seen. And and the thing that makes me nervous above all, Trevor, just from a singular perspective, is the fact that the Chiefs' projected wide receiver one is Kadarius Toney. Yeah. He has fi- 55 career receptions for 591 career yards and two career touchdowns in 19 games. That's very terrifying. Yeah. Because Juju Smith-Schuster coming here last year, although had a, a season before that that was injured, we've seen him have multiple 1,000-yard seasons and another 900-yard season, and has had seven touchdowns multiple times in his career with an aging Ben Roethlisberger. That's yeah. why I was so much more comfortable with that scenario. Now he's gone, and now people are just assuming that we're just going to have another guy just become Juju Smith-Schuster in this offense. Yes, Patrick Mahomes is great enough to have a guy like that, but to your point, Trevor, if Kadarius Tony could stay healthy, he could be that guy. I think I, I think every, I, I think everyone's penciling him in as the wide receiver one, but I think the most hype, which is crazy, and it, it is irrational to put this much hype on two guys, two guys that have never played real NFL time, which is Justin Ross and Rasheed Rice. Well, I'm gonna get to Justin in a second. Yeah, so um, just, the and, hype and, is crazy between these guys. But you and I both have agreed, and a lot of people, if they're truthful out there, would agree that 2022, 2022, the Chiefs, the Chiefs had one of the thinnest wide receiver rooms in the league. Mm-hmm. Now you sub, you subtract your best veteran receiver and you don't add anything but a rookie second rounder and the potential of Justin Ross maybe adding, that's even thinner to me. And if if you thought Patrick had to put on the magic last season, wait until you wait until you see what he's going to be asked of in 2023. Right. There's going to be even more asked of Patrick Mahomes. I know his offensive line is going to probably still be very solid, especially in that in the running of uh, the, the the guard and center positions. Yeah. Tackle Juwan Taylor will probably take care of business on the right side. Left tackle, Left tackle makes me very nervous. Right. But Patrick Mahomes is going to have to take on even more so this year than he had even in 2022. And we saw how heroic that that run was. 